The experience of being here with, uh, uh, in, in response to the audience, in response to the, um, the archive materials and the exhibition itself, um, creates a very specific and unusual situation. his Meister Eckert lecture, lines from Meister Eckert, a lecture on Zen Buddhism, the Bill of Rights, or the Declaration of Independence. Like take take the space because there are there are certain rules, there are certain schemes, there are like certain dogmas that you have to sort of uh, relate to, um, and then sort of trying to bring uh, ourselves into that and and make the space our own has been uh, not a very conscious thing, but like, like it's not like often reclaiming the space, but it's been like a ongoing. It's just happened naturally. Um, that we've been doing our thing in here, even though it's a museum and it's a different type of sound and it's a different type of uh, audience than a theater audience. Um. 
substantially. By now, the mists were beginning Everyone to burn away from the hilltops and the sun shone down with a burning edge. Down on the right, on the far edge of the lake, almost hidden in the lush growth, Connie pointed to a long, white, barrack-like building, the library. The morning was turning hot and humid as we walked up to the flat, concrete entrance of the three-tiered studies building adjacent to the library. Connie explaining that here, just as at Princeton, each student had his or her own private study. Thursday we did this performance where we, like, we rehearsed it all day and we followed John Cage's score, Theatre Play Number One, and then one of our teachers who isn't here, he um, sort of distributed the roles and the, how to fill the score, which was like, it was quite true to the original, but then uh, one of the tasks was like, Nicolina went out and filmed very specific tasks in the city. I learned a very specific choreography from the archive. Somebody learned a very specific, yeah. Um, and that was like the only time, like it was extremely random, the, the product, which was like the purpose. Uh, but I feel like the whole stay has been like this very random, like everything has happened at random. Very few things were planned. And so many nice, like so many nice things have happened because of this uh, randomness. Art history is the blunt. Art criticism is gothic. The student must learn to use the materials himself, become himself related to forms and colors. The Greco-Roman tradition is overrated. Forget history. Think of nothing but form and color, and you will prefer Byzantine primitive and modern work. Design, color, structural sculpture. What is the sign? Planning, order, choice, arrangement, combination, function, knowledge. The sign is a doing. What is the achievement of the sign? Function, order, aesthetic of enjoyment, economy, attitudes, awareness. What is the sign? Planning, order, choice, a car symbol. Inside the music house, there was also a small pot billet stove. So Lou or any of the music students could practice or compose there in chilly weather. Yeah. Yeah. It's also interesting that you address randomness within yeah. such a strong partiture, yeah. which is maybe gives a clue that within a strong structure, it's, it's space for being uh, spontaneous and yeah. Yeah. random, yeah. Well, yeah. planning for the unexpected, mm -hmm. which is a contradiction in terms. Yeah. But you can perhaps make a structure that allows the unexpected to, to be. I think it even, it even um, proves that if you have a structure, within the limits you can grow enormously because it kind of cares you also, or carries you, and it forces you also to maybe run against the wall or to jump over it. I think it's a very interesting experience because that was a discussion in the beginning with some of the colleagues who came with their students that they said, ah, for our students, it's not interesting to work within a partiture that is given by another artist, where is the freedom for the artist? But the freedom is within the limits.
um, there's a structure, there's, uh, there's certain actions that one fulfills, and, and then there's also the question of what, what else will take place. That relation also goes back and forth because I also sometimes like sitting, like watching people, and like, and then in a way I'm the audience because people when they walk around there they really put on an attitude of being in a museum, you know, they're walking and how okay I'm looking, and, and you know it's it's for me it's also as soon as I look at someone looking at me, then the confusion also starts in who who are the audience. And who are the performer? Mm -hmm. There is no border here. There's no line that says you're now entering another space where students are present and uh, people are, as I would say, washed ashore. They are spending time in the exhibition. They may have read the text in the front, which explains about the project, but probably not, or probably they didn't really understand it, or they forgot what they read, and suddenly, you know, they appear here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's an incredible potential, uh, which can be used or ignored or yeah, somehow interacted with. Well, Laura came to uh, came to Black Mountain at the age of uh, uh, so in 1935. Okay. Yeah. yeah, 35, and I think she graduated in 38. No, right. Yeah, and also uh, not only could Annie Alves uh, was not allowed to paint, but neither was Laura. So, uh, but she of course had this background as seamstress and with textiles. So uh, I don't know if she naturally would have selected to paint, but she, she mentioned it in the classes that, she, uh, that women could not paint at that time. So that was something that I heard from her. around what can I do, how can I uh, place myself in the room where I say it, or how can I use my voice in this, or how can I like, play with this text. And I kind of experienced like every time I went up there with the text, and I, it always went some direction that I couldn't um, proceed, predict. predict. And uh, I really, really liked that about the room, that it was, I mean, for me it was very small experiments that just popped up. Very in the spirit. Uh, she had, for instance, she was carrying around a typewriter and uh, when somebody was doing the reading, she would sit and type along, but didn't, like, she didn't manage to hear it all, so it would just be like sporadic words uh, down on a page, and then in the end she collected all this to this uh, <laughs> poetry collection, mm -hmm. which I thought was really nice because it, Get, like it sort of summed up the whole archive somehow because you got, just got this atmosphere um, and this mix of all the different words and texts. And definitely also the sound of the exactly, that has been machine parallel to the reading of the character in the space. <laughs> yeah. <coughs>
the, the typewriter has been going every day, and the piano at different times. Mm. Because I, I, I have experienced and uh, experimented a lot with uh, preparing the piano in different ways, putting different stuff into it, and see how you can change the sound. Also, the left word upside down. You see, I can do it in all four ways of painting. And then they saw the arm was feeling. I made them these forms. We repeat the forms, we reverse the forms upside down, downside up, and so we get new training not only for the eye, but for the arm. An invitation reached me from Black Mountain to join Albert and to teach them. I, wonder how I was glad to spend go. These days on After marrying events. Irene von Debschitz, who had also joined me from Berlin, be only we had to submit to a grilling sums. by the American consul in Naples, who was suspicious Every as to my purpose at PMC. Possibly Everyone as a political in the college. It is That relation also goes back to sitting, like watching people. And, like, and then, in a way, I'm the audience because people, when they walk around, they do really good on an attitude of being in a museum, you know, they're walking and how, okay, I'm looking. It's, and, you know, it's, it's, for me, it's also, as soon as I look at someone looking at me, then the confusion also starts in who, who are the audience uh, and who are the performer. Mm. Also, like, what's, uh, what I hear, uh, and the discussion that it's something that has sort of followed us and accompanied us from the beginning is the tension between what one plans and then what, what takes place, finally. So um, I've seen groups which uh, uh, kept very rigid to their, uh, to their um, plans for the time period um, and to some, in some cases uh, uh, were a bit frustrated um, and others who came with certain ideas, but then um, as they experienced the situation, those plans then uh, mutated and developed and changed and uh, adapted to the situation which one finds oneself in. We're hearing and, uh, uh, I think it was interesting also for you who have just arrived, um, coming from the visual arts, this is a, um, a, a group that uh, works very, uh, to some degree, a bit differently than, than in, a, in a visual arts academy. Um, but uh, as I've observed all the groups through, there's been a kind of moment of realization of how this is uh, the experience of being here with, uh, um, uh, in, in response to the audience, in response to the, um, the archive materials and the exhibition itself um, creates a very specific and unusual situation. Ways that you can invite the audience and they can actually come and walk around and look around and touch your stuff while you're working and, and re you really can interact with them and, and I also think they're really curious like because the, the, usually in the museum they have these limited uh, boundaries or something but when they actually get invited they also want to participate so it's like asking them questions where they can go and sign and, and especially also when they had the kids and children playing, then it was more easier for them to like come and interact because they have the social norm of not they have to look at a distance and stuff. But it's, when they cross this barrier, it's just very enriching in a way. And also when you do the texts, and sometimes when people come up over after you and and have a talk or a discussion with you about the topic, or, yeah, so you can be very active. Yeah. For me, students, they said that they felt like they were, you know, they were working in the space, and then, uh, but then they were being watched working as if they were acting, but in fact they were really working. So then it's, it all comes all kinds of questions about what is my action, um, and then there was a story about someone who left their own working notebook on the table and they came back after lunch and uh, and someone had written in their notebook you know, their name and had added to their comments, so, <laughs> yes. It's also interesting because most of the stuff with it was some, in one way or another, performative, except from Freya, who was also doing, she was doing croquis drawings of everybody reading, so we had like a huge stack of paper that she uh, made of everybody, and these poems, and of course people made some stuff, but most of what we did was ephemeral in the sense that it's, 
like it disappeared again. Um, what I really like that it's a, it occurred, it happened. There was a moment based on who was here that day, what audience was in, and then it disappeared again. Um, so I, yeah, I like that. There is often like this push and pull in between like the thoughts you already have for yourself, like okay, this I want to do today, and then it's what other people do, and then it's what the audience do, and then you can maybe get like, oh, but I want to join in. This, but then you also have like the score, and I need to remember that at this point I need to be there. So it's like always, or I felt or a lot of time very in very many directions at one point, and sometimes it was just like, ah, I cannot do anything because I want to do like everything. The important question is, what is it that is not just beautiful? but also ugly, not just good, but also evil. Not just true, but also an illusion. I remember now that Feldman spoke of shadows. He said that the sounds were not sounds, but shadows. They're obviously sounds, that's why they're shadows. Every something is an echo of nothing. Life goes on. The show went unnoticed in the press, except for one short, heartily favorable review in the front by a million young critic, Julie Park. Was for me that they were possible. 